Being a competitive person is great when it comes to cycling, but when it comes to love, it can become a deadly trait. In today's video, we'll be looking at how a star cyclist was gunned down in the prime of her life for a terrible reason. This case is all over the place, involving an international manhunt, a confusing love triangle, and pure, unbridled rage. From the streets of Austin, Texas, to the beaches of Costa Rica, it'll definitely leave you questioning how far someone could go to eliminate their competition, both on and off the racetrack. Our love and respect goes out to all those who knew and loved Mariah Wilson, and all those affected by this case. Austin, the capital of the U.S. state of Texas. It's a place where the locals are as warm as the weather. Looking around, you'll find Tex-Mex cuisine and the local motto, keep Austin weird everywhere you go. Now, Austin is a huge city with 2.5 million people calling the metro area home. Among these residents, our story today starts with three. Colin Strickland, his girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong, and Mariah Wilson. It's 2021. And if you looked past the bustling traffic, you might have spotted our three key players pedaling along the streets. First, let's talk about Caitlin Armstrong. Born on November 21, 1987, in Livonia, Michigan, she was your typical all-American girl next door. Her high school classmates remember her as outgoing and friendly. Though she could be a bit bossy at times, she was a red-headed, athletic teenager who dominated in volleyball, track, field, and basketball. After high school, Armstrong pursued higher education at Schoolcraft College before transferring to Eastern Michigan University. She started her career in finance, but eventually decided to become a licensed realtor. In her free time, she taught yoga, which is an activity she ended up being quite passionate about, as we'll see later. Fast forward to October 2018. She swiped right on a dating app called Hinge and matched with Colin Strickland. And that is the point she entered a tumultuous relationship that made her life more intense. Colin was born on November 7, 1987. This Texas native comes from the town of Johnson City. As a young boy growing up on a farm just outside the city limits, he fell in love with the great outdoors and learned to ride a bike on dusty gravel roads. Colin wasn't your average farm kid, though. He had a passion for music and art, and people described him as quite eccentric. Plus, growing up on an organic farm made him pretty particular about where his food came from. By the time he was 25, Colin had peddled his way into the professional cycling scene, joining the Red Bull athletic community. He won his first cycling race after college and soon found himself competing on the international stage. Naturally, he became a social media influencer. At that point, he had over 400,000 followers on Instagram and became a celebrity in the cycling world. When Armstrong and Colin first got together, they seemed like the perfect match. They shared a love for cycling, had mutual friends, and appeared to be genuinely happy. As time went on, things got more serious. In 2021, after a plumbing mishap in Armstrong's apartment, they decided to take the plunge and move in together. But that ended up not being such a great idea. Despite all the positive signs, things were slowly beginning to fall apart for the couple. By October 2021, they'd reached a breaking point and decided to break up. Now, most couples would part ways after a breakup, but not these two. They continued living together, just in separate bedrooms. It's an awkward living arrangement, to say the least. It seems neither of them was too hung up on the breakup. Armstrong reportedly started exploring her options on Bumble, meeting and getting intimate with multiple men. Now, I'm not one to judge, but as you can imagine, this didn't sit well with Colin. That being said, he wasn't sitting at home pining away either. He meets a woman named Mariah Wilson. And this is where things get to a boiling point between Armstrong and Colin. Mariah Wilson was born on May 18, 1996, to Eric and Karen Wilson. She grew up alongside her brother Matthew in the town of Kirby in northern Vermont. From a young age, she showed an intense perfectionism that sometimes got the better of her. Her parents found her a therapist in middle school to help her manage that driven personality. But don't think for a second that dampened her determination. If anything, it fueled her to achieve some pretty incredible things. She had a calmness and a cheerfulness to her that was unlike other cyclists who are, you know, very serious as they should be. 
She just seemed to float around like a, an angel. Michael Marks, creator and race director for the Belgian Waffle Ride, reflecting on gravel and mountain bike racer Mariah Wilson. Just two weeks ago, she won the race in California. We all just marveled at, you know, just what a wonderful personality and a great athlete and an ambassador for our sport. And then all of a sudden, how could this happen? Um, and everyone's just sort of reeling from it. Like they can't believe that this member of our community was just taken away like that. After graduating from Burke Mountain Academy in 2014, Mariah went on to graduate with an engineering degree from Dartmouth College in 2019. Outside of her academic pursuits, Mariah had other interests too. She loved to travel, enjoyed putting pen to paper in her spare time, and was always experimenting in the kitchen. Her favorites were tacos and maple creamies. Coming from an athletic family, Mariah was drawn to sports and the outdoors from day one. Cycling became her passion, and little did she know it would eventually become her profession. At first, Mariah tried to join the corporate world as a demand planner for a place called Specialized. But let's be honest, corporate life isn't for everyone. Fed up with the bureaucracy and office politics, she made a bold move to become a professional cyclist. And she ended up doing amazingly well. In just two seasons, she rocketed to the top of the gravel cycling world, racking up victories in both gravel and mountain races. Then came the pandemic. While it put a damper on bike racing, Mariah used the work-from-home situation to her advantage, ramping up her training and honing her skills. In November 2020, she took on the challenge of Moab's White Rim Trail a grueling 100-mile loop that's a rite of passage for American endurance racers. She completed it in just under seven hours, setting a new women's record. She was beyond impressive. Fast forward to October 2021, she moved to Austin, Texas, ready to make an even bigger name for herself in the cycling world. In an interview, Mariah shared her excitement about the upcoming racing season. She was gearing up for the Lifetime Series Grand Prix, a mix of mountain and gravel races that suited her versatile skills perfectly. She also had her sights set on other big gravel events, like BWR, Rule of Three, and Gravel Locos, not to mention some races back in her home state of Vermont. Mariah's attitude was, if you're in it, you might as well be in it to win it. And with her track record, who could doubt her? This was a woman ready to take the cycling world by storm. It was October, and Mariah had caught the attention of the newly single Colin Strickland. It was a Thursday night at a local cycling event when the two recently single cyclists crossed paths. Colin and Armstrong had split, and Mariah had just ended things with her boyfriend, too. Naturally, sparks started to fly between Mariah and Colin. Can you blame them? They were both ready to move on, after all. But Colin didn't quite realize how much this was hurting Armstrong. And Armstrong definitely wasn't shy about showing that to him. Somehow, she got her hands on Mariah's number and started sending threatening and harassing messages. It got so bad that Mariah had to block Armstrong's number and even ask Colin to step in and get her to stop. The three of them were big into cycling and shared the same friend group. So things were more than just a little awkward. And unfortunately, things were about to get even more complicated. Apparently, Colin and Mariah's relationship was short-lived, ending in just a week or two. Colin ended things, and he and Armstrong eventually got back together. Yes, despite Armstrong's bizarre behavior towards Mariah and her own casual flings in between. Colin and Mariah supposedly went back to being just friends. But what Armstrong didn't know was that they were still meeting up in private. Colin even went as far as changing Mariah's name and his phone to keep their relationship hidden. Not exactly the behavior of just friends. As you can imagine, Armstrong suspected something was going on. She started to have her doubts, and those doubts apparently led her to consider some pretty extreme actions caused by her rage at Mariah. May 11, 2020. It was just before 10 p.m. when a frantic call came into the Austin Police Department. A woman clearly distressed reported finding her friend unresponsive on the bathroom floor. Authorities rushed to the address near East 7th Street, just east of downtown Austin. What they found was nothing short of horrific. 
a young woman in her mid-20s, shot multiple times at close range. The victim was none other than Mariah Wilson. Local news quickly picked up the story. Mariah, or Mo, as her friends called her, was supposed to compete in a mountain bike race in the hill country that very day. Instead, she was pronounced dead in a home on Maple Avenue. Hello, my name is Detective Richard Spiller with the Austin Police Department Homicide Unit. I'm here today to provide details of our preliminary investigation into the murder of Anna Mariah Wilson. I'll take a few questions at the end. On May 11, 2022, at approximately 9.56 p.m., Austin police officers responded to a check welfare urgent call at 1708 Maple Avenue in Austin. Upon their arrival, they found the resident of 1708 Maple Avenue performing CPR on a female. That female was Anna Wilson. Despite their life-saving efforts, Anna Wilson was pronounced deceased at 10.10 p.m. The preliminary investigation revealed that Anna Wilson, a cyclist, was visiting Austin and staying with her friend on her way to the Dallas area for a race. One week before her 26th birthday, the cycling community was shaken. Velo, a prominent cycling magazine, published a statement from Mariah's family. She was always pushing tirelessly to reach her goals, they said. We knew she was pursuing what she loved. The autopsy confirmed what everyone feared. It was ruled a homicide. On May 12, 2022, that trust was shattered when a member of our community likely took the life of Mariah Wilson. Mariah Wilson was a pro cyclist who was found dead in East Austin early May. The moment we cease to hold each other, the moment we break faith with one another, the scene goes us and the light goes out. Cyclists who ride the same roads together, train together and race together, rode together for Wilson to the last place police say she visited before she was killed. Two shots to the head, one to the chest, all fired while Mariah was already on the ground. It was chilling. Mariah was known for her friendly nature and rising popularity. To those who knew her personally, it made no sense at all. She was kind, friendly, and never made enemies. Well, except for Armstrong, that is. In fact, she had expressed a desire to kill Mariah in the weeks leading up to the murder. At the crime scene, the evidence was telling. Shell casings on the floor, no sign of the gun. The front door was unlocked and Mariah's bike had been tossed into some bamboo just 70 feet from the house. Thankfully, Mariah's friend, the one who found her, was able to provide some crucial information to the authorities. In times like these, every little detail counts. As the investigation began, Armstrong was the prime suspect. The question everyone wondered was, could jealousy have led to this murder? Mariah was staying at her friend's place, which had an electric lock system. Every time someone used the door, it sent a notification to her friend's phone. This little detail would turn out to be crucial for the investigators. Now, let's break down that fateful evening. Mariah and Colin went for a swim at Deep Eddy Pool. She left the house around 5.55 p.m. After their dip, they grabbed a bite to eat, and then Colin dropped Mariah off at her friend's place. At 8.36 p.m., the door unlocked. Mariah was home, safe and sound. Colin took off right after dropping her off, never even set foot inside. But what neither of them knew, Armstrong had been tailing them. This video shows an SUV detectives believe belongs to Armstrong pull up to the home Wilson was staying in one minute after Strickland dropped her off on his motorcycle. She followed them for at least half of their outing. A neighbor's security camera caught Armstrong's black Jeep cruising by at 8.37 p.m. It was a distinct vehicle with a big bike rack on the back, a luggage rack on top, and chrome around the windows. It definitely stood out. When the cops searched Armstrong and Colin's place, they found that exact same Jeep. But that's not all. They also found a Sig Sauer handgun that matched the murder weapon. The shell casings were an extraordinarily close match to those at the crime scene. Colin was there and cooperated, but Armstrong was nowhere to be found. Colin confessed to his affair with Mariah during questioning. He swore he had nothing to do with her murder, but he did admit to lying to Armstrong that night, sending her a text about dropping off flowers when he was actually with Mariah. Turns out, Armstrong already had an outstanding warrant for her arrest. She walked out of a Botox treatment without paying for it by pretending she left her card in her car some time back. But when they brought her in, the warrant was allegedly considered invalid because her date of birth was incorrect. 
While in custody, Armstrong was asked about Mariah's death. She responded by rolling her eyes and nodding. When confronted about the surveillance footage, she just said she didn't know. With the warrant mix-up, they had to let her go. But since somebody tipped off the cops that Armstrong had been furious and shaking with anger about Mariah, even saying she wanted to kill her, she remained their prime suspect. As the investigation continued, things looked worse and worse for Armstrong. The SUV in the footage was definitely hers. The gun found at her place was almost certainly the murder weapon. It was only a matter of time before she'd get caught. So Armstrong went off the grid. She moved out, cut contact with friends, deleted her social media, sold her Jeep, and ghosted Colin, despite owing him money. Then, May 17, 2021, brought another big surprise. Authorities issued a homicide warrant for Armstrong, only to find out she'd vanished into thin air. Surveillance footage caught her boarding a flight at Austin Bergstrom International Airport. She's wearing white pants, a blue jacket, and a black face mask, clearly in an attempt to conceal her identity. Her destination is New York City's LaGuardia Airport. Cleverly enough, she used her sister's passport. So the authorities were completely clueless about her escape. Now where does a fugitive go to lay low? Costa Rica, apparently. Armstrong ended up in Santa Teresa, a remote paradise that's a real pain to get to. It's a three-hour drive and the two-hour ferry ride from the nearest airport. It's the kind of place where tourists and locals mingle at surf bars and beach parties, with fancy bakeries and a lot more. Armstrong, now going by Ari, completely reinvented herself. She dyed her hair, got a nose job, costing $6,000, and even started teaching yoga. She was living it up, sipping margaritas by the pool and working part-time at a hostel. The locals just saw her as another Westerner who fell in love with paradise. She even found love again with a man named Teal Ackerson, who recalled seeing her nose all bandaged up. She claimed it was a surfing accident, which he shrugged off. During this time frame, she stayed at Don Jones Surf and Yoga Lodge for less than $20 a night, and on most evenings, would party at a barbecue, but it didn't last forever. After 43 days on the run, Armstrong's carefree life suddenly came to a close. Three Costa Rican police officers working with U.S. Marshals cornered her outside the hostel. When they demanded ID, she claimed she didn't have any, but a quick search of her room's safe revealed her true identity. The U.S. Marshals had been hot on her trail for six weeks. The breakthrough came when they discovered she'd used a fraudulent passport to fly from Newark to Costa Rica on May 18th, just a week after the murder. They pieced together flight information, passenger lists, and even gate camera footage to track her down. Now Armstrong's facing not just a murder charge in Austin, but also a federal charge for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Now Armstrong is back in the U.S., awaiting trial. On July 21, 2022, Armstrong stood before the court and pleaded not guilty. On October 2023, she was held on a $3.5 million bail. But if you thought Armstrong's insanity ended there, you'd be wrong. She actually attempted to escape prison, and this escape wasn't on impulse. She'd planned it for months. TECC reviewed surveillance video from the facility, which showed Armstrong exercising vigorously throughout the last several months, while simultaneously complaining of injuries requiring specialized medical attention. Armstrong had utilized an injury complaint to secure an outside medical appointment, as well as a medical request restricting the use of leg restraints. All of this created enough of an opening for Armstrong to make her, ultimately unsuccessful, shot. Armstrong slipped off her striped uniform pants, which revealed she was wearing thermal pants underneath, in an effort to disguise her appearance as an inmate. Armstrong was also able to manipulate her left hand from the hand restraints to assist in her attempted escape. Her audacity is truly astounding if she thought her plan could work. A desperate escape isn't something an innocent person would attempt. She is now charged with escape causing bodily injury, an additional felony count on top of the murder charge. Finally, on November 16, 2023, Armstrong was found guilty of first-degree murder. She was sentenced to 90 years in prison with eligibility for parole after 30 years.
In cause number D1DC2230129, verdict of the jury for the offense of murder. We, the jury, having found the defendant, Caitlin Armstrong, guilty of the offense of murder, assess her punishment at confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division for a period of 90 years and a $10,000 fine signed at 1.58 p.m. by the presiding juror. You may be seated. Armstrong is appealing the conviction. Not only that, but on May 6, 2024, Wilson's parents filed a civil wrongful death lawsuit against Armstrong, seeking $1 million in damages. The compensation will cover burial and funeral expenses, as well as emotional damages they suffered as a result of Wilson's death. The lawsuit will also prevent Armstrong from profiting financially from her crime. On June 17, 2024, the judge ordered Armstrong to pay $15 million to the Wilson family. Do you think Mariah's death was preventable if Armstrong's threats were taken seriously? And what do you think about Colin's role in the tragedy? Is he partially at fault for being deceptive and ignoring Armstrong's red flags? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you want more videos like this, please be sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more true crime videos. See you in the next one.